One thing that I desire of the Lord, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. One thing that I desire of the Lord, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord, to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. Welcome, welcome again to another episode of New Life in Christ Christian Center Broadcast. And I am your host, <laughs> Gerald B. Walton, the pastor, teacher, and elder at New Life in Christ Christian Center. And I thank you for being with us today and for all prayer and interest or request about our ministry, please contact us at 513-257-9121 or you can find us on uh, uh, our uh, you can call us or get in touch with us at New Life in Christ Christian Center at Yahoo.com. New Life in Christ Christian Center at Yahoo.com. Please give us a call. I'd love to fellowship with you, talk to you about the, the ministry, what God is doing uh, in our lives. And just if you don't have a home, uh, make us your home. Pray about it and give us a call. Amen. Well, today we're going to be continuing our final uh, episode or final message on Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Uh, it's been awesome uh, and we're going to continue our last uh, foundation principles which are found in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. So I want to first before we get started with our lesson is I want you to know that at New Life in Christ Christian Center is a place where Jesus is exalted and we bless his holy name. And it's a place where we love people. We love God's people, you know, all nations. You know, we've been called to the nations, the nations of people. And white, black, Hispanic, it does not matter because God created all of us for his image and for his likeness. But I also want to give a special thanks to my loved ones and my friends and my neighbors. Okay, a shout out. I thank God for them and I pray for them. Continue to pray for my loved ones, friends and neighbors. I pray that God's kingdom come and God's will be done and that the blessings of the Lord make you rich. So who's ever viewing right now, may the blessings of the Lord make you rich. May you be prosperous and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. Well, I have an encouraging word uh, that I want to share with. I usually like to encourage people or uh, give them a word of comfort or encouragement. And uh, I usually go to Psalms, and uh, I want to share this with you. Uh, we used to have a, a basketball team called Shield Basketball. And uh, 
Uh, I used to share with the young men this passage of scripture taken from Psalms 27, verse 7, and it reads, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. Amen. So may you be encouraged by this word of God in your life, that God is your strength and God is your shield. And let your heart trust in him because he is your help and he will certainly help you. Therefore, let your heart greatly rejoice in him and with songs of praise. Praise him. Amen. So that's uh, for your enrichment, encouragement during the days we live in. And just be assured that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout all the world for a witness. And then shall the end come. So glory be to God in the highest. OK, well, I have a prayer that I want to read over your lives today. Uh, to impart to you, that's my desire that this prayer will be imparted to you. Amen. And uh, we can go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Go to 1 Peter. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 9. Amen. This is my prayer to the viewers today. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through, through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, though, being more precious than of gold, that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus, whom have not seen ye love, and whom thou, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, rejoicing the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. May God bless you with that strong word to be edified, comforted, and exhorted as you continue to walk with the Lord. Amen. So today's message is found in Hebrews 6, 1, and 2. And this is our final uh, lesson on Hebrews 6, 1, and 2. And the Lord just uh, prompted my spirit to share this because the Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And these uh, foundation principles he found in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2 is to edify and also encourage us to let these principles stay in our life. But then it also means that we need to go on to perfection. Perfection means maturity, that we are to grow in the grace of the knowledge of God, that our faith is to increase from faith to faith and to glory to glory. So in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, uh, we've been studying and sharing the gospel. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptisms, we've discussed that, and of the laying on the hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. The sixth one is eternal judgment, which we will go over today. Amen. And this is the gospel. This is the gospel. Amen. 
And uh, I pray that you receive the gospel, that you will share the gospel. Freely you have received the gospel, freely we are to give and share with others. Amen. Who have no hope, who have no faith, who do not believe Jesus, who have not received Jesus. Amen. So our final uh, principle of Christ or the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ, that he, he talked to the apostles to continue in furtherance and to just have this in our hearts so that when we need to apply it, we can apply it. You know, that's the thing about God's word, you know, is to be stored up in our hearts and when we need to apply it or use it or exercise it or demonstrate it, we do so. So today is eternal judgment. Today's message is eternal judgment. And um, uh, a lot of people will say, wow, this eternal judgment, is there going to be one? There sure is. Uh, I'll tell you, God's got this, got this all worked out. You know he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Did you know he's the author and finisher of our faith? And, and for us, did you know he that begun a good work in you is faithful to complete it? That's the good news. Child of God, amen. Rise and shine and give God the glory, child of God. Those who have received Christ, receive the gift of God and receive eternal life and be blessed beyond measure. For we can't take things from this world with us. And as the minister says, many at funerals, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But only what you do and live in Christ will be forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words will live forever. So today we're going to talk about eternal judgment, understanding eternal judgment. Amen. I like to say God's judgment is just. Oh, I'm so thankful that God's judgment is just. He who made the ears, can he not hear? He who formed and created the eyes, can he not see? God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. Amen. So he knows. But he has uh, decided in his will, his way, that there is going to be eternal judgment. So we want to talk about it so we can understand it. So it be for the enrichment of our lives as saints, sons, daughters, body of Christ, family of God. Well, eternal judgment, first, it's in Christ. He's been authorized or given authority to handle it. Amen. And it is the belief, it is the belief that Jesus Christ will set as judge over all the world. So the Bible says in Revelation, his judgment is just. It is just. It, and so God is a God of justice. Amen. He's a God of love, a God of peace, a God of righteousness, and yes, a God of justice. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. I'm so glad, you know, and ain't nobody going to get away <laughs> or try to get away from doing wrong in the eyes of the Lord. And that's why he says, vengeance is my eyes shall repay, saith the Lord. Amen. And he tells us to love our enemies and pray for them and do good to those despitefully because there's still hope for them. So let's go to Acts, uh, talking about eternal judgment. And let's read there, Acts chapter 17. So, so we're going to spend some time learning about eternal judgment today. And in Acts chapter 17, if you follow along with me, have your Bibles with you, follow along with me. Acts 17, verse 28, uh, it reads as follows. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Hallelujah. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone 
or any graven image by art and man's devices. Amen. Those are called dumb idols, by the way. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Amen. Repent means to turn to God. Save yourselves, John was preaching. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, the kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom. Amen. And 31 says, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. That's Jesus the Christ. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, which we talked about last time we were here together, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. How about certain men clave unto him, though, and believing among which was this person, Dionymus, and this other person, and a woman named Damius, Dam Damius, and others with them. So Paul was preaching about the gospel and referring to resurrection life. Right? There is a resurrection of, of the dead, and that's part of eternal judgment, the resurrection of the dead. So why is it called eternal judgment? It's because the sentence pronounced upon mankind can never be changed. It can't be changed. It's God will honor his word. It can't be changed. But who will be judged? Every man or person, woman, person, I don't care what gender, it doesn't matter. Whoever lived will be judged. Everyone. So let's go to Hebrews 9, verse 26. Hebrews 9, verse 26. And we'll read this particular passage. I mean, 27, excuse me. And 27 uh, reads, uh, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So there is an appointed for a man. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, verse 28, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The second appearing of Jesus. Amen. And he's going to appear in the second time without sin unto salvation. So there's a pointing unto man, men, wants to die. But after that is judgment. Man will be judged. Man and women will be judged after you die, after you pass away, after, from this flesh, from this physical body. Amen. And there are two uh, eternal judgments um, that we want to uh, talk about briefly. Uh, the first is the judgment seat of Christ, and the second is the judgment of the great white throne or the great white throne judgment. Okay. So we'll take first the judgment seat of Christ where uh, we can read in more information on that on second Corinthians five and 10, the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. Second Corinthians 5.10, it reads as follows. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Interesting. According to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. And then if we go to Psalms 135 and 14, So God's going to judge everyone's life when they pass away. Psalms 135, 14, that is. It 
and it reads as follows. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold and, and the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusts in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. That fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth in Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. So for the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. Amen. Now let's talk about the great white throne judgment. We need to go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. The, the great white throne judgment. In Revelation verse 20, Verse 11 and 12, it reads, And I saw a great throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Okay, so if that's uh, pretty much what it says to be the truth, um, you want to do more research, please do so. Um, but we're going to go to Daniel now, the book of Daniel, the Old Testament there. And uh, we're going to uh, read a passage of scripture there. Mm Daniel uh, 7, 9 through 10. Daniel 7, 9 through 10. Okay, Daniel 7, 9 through 10. And I beheld... And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garments were white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as the burning fire. A fire stream issued and came forth from before him, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Amen. Uh, and I beheld then, I'm going to go to 11, beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had the dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Okay. So, what is the judgment seat of Christ? It's the judgment at the throne of Jesus Christ in heaven, where he, he sits 
where he rules and he reigns. The Lord sits upon the throne in the Lamb. Blessing and glory and honor in Revelations. It is the judgment of believers at the throne of Jesus Christ in heaven. And this will take place when Jesus returns to the earth to redeem the redeemed of all ages who are in their graves, which is the first resurrection, and those living on the earth. And that's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 19. Um, let's go to John chapter 5, verse 22. John 5, 22. And it reads as follows. For the Father judges no man, but, the, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So God has committed the judgment to his Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And then if we go to Matthew 24. Go back to Matthew 24, 30 and 31. I'm spending some time in the Word. Amen. Laboring in the Word here a little here. In uh, Matthew 24, 30 through 31. And it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. So we see the work, the responsibility or the work of Jesus Christ in his return. So uh, the angels have a part. They will gather with the believers, the children of God, and escort them to the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, which some believe or many believe and we will give an account for our stewardship on earth and to be rewarded accordingly that's what the judgment seat of Christ is for, for us now the great white throne judgment is the final judgment for everyone who is not a part of the first resurrection as well as the fallen angels. And um, you can uh, reference that to, to, to uh, Judges 6. Judges 6. Let's go to Judges 6. Verse 39. We'll read there in 40. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thy anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let uh, let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece, let it now be dry only upon the fleece and upon all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on the ground. So, um, uh, let me go to Jude. There's no six Let's see. Yeah, that's what I. Six. Oh. Uh, I made a mistake there. We need to be at Jude 6. And it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but let their own habitation, he had reserved an everlasting change under darkness until the judgment of the great day. So that should be Jude. Uh, I'm sorry, I made that. Correction there, Jude chapter 6. Okay. Okay. So how does God uh, de determine uh, man's eternal destiny? Because that has everything to do with um, eternal judgment. Well, God's word tells us 
that we can either choose to accept or reject his son Jesus Christ and that has a lot to do with the judgment of God because he sent his son Christ to save us and deliver us from our sins he, he sent his son for a purpose uh, to restore us back to him so we, and then if we go to John 3 16 it, it really explains it 16 17 and 18 that is um, in John 3 16 17 and 18 uh, it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And for everyone that doeth uh, everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to that light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So God's word tells man uh, that they have a choice to accept or reject his son, Jesus Christ. In uh, 1 John 5 and 12, it says, He that have the Son have life, and he that have not the Son of God have not life. So God gives man a choice to choose life or death, blessings or curses. And uh, if you choose Christ, you will have life, not just now, but eternally. And um, I'm going to go to Mark 16, 16. Uh, And it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So God, you know, Jesus Christ is an absolute for life and life more abundantly, for life, eternal life. He's an absolute to the answer of a sinful state world that we live in. He's the only answer. And um, if you see people doing good, then I believe they acknowledge that there's a good God. But every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is the gospel. So people can have the will to choose Christ and receive eternal life or will not to and and what happens if they choose not to condemnation comes on them and the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life so that's the judgment and and also God's word we find out to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ has everything to do with Romans 10 16 so obedience is paramount from the standpoint that you not only receive life, uh, but you receive life more abundantly, that you receive freedom from sin, and sin don't have dominion over you. So Christ is, again, an absolute when you talk about the judgment, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. And God knows when you don't choose love or choose life in him, then you're going to be tampering with darkness and you're going to be uh, caught up in sin. And sin has a consequence. There'll be a judgment for sin, sinners. Wicked, wickedness. Sin is involved with wickedness. And the devil is behind it because he's a thief. Christ said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
I came that you have made life and life more abundantly. So when Jesus appeared in the world, he, his purpose was to destroy the works of the devil because the devil was, was tricking, deceiving people, um, which also gave them a con uh, he led He was leading them, and he's still uh, doing it today, leading people to death, leading people to not receiving eternal life. So, there, so Christ, is, the judgment has been committed to him from his Father. So if we see Romans uh, 10, 16, it reads, uh, But they that have not all obeyed the gospel, for Eslam said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So there are people who have not obeyed the gospel. The gospel is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. And to receive the gospel is to have faith in him, faith in Christ, and faith toward God. Um, it, you'd be surprised people live by faith and they don't even know it when you wake up in the morning and do this or you do that you're living by faith so the question is in your whole life time is it faith towards something is it faith toward the job is it faith toward traveling the world well God didn't create you for that God created you to have faith toward him and so that he could show you how to live how to be protected, how to understand what freedom really means, how to understand what prosperity really means, and peace of mind. Um, let's go, because right now we're talking about how obedience will affect the judgment that uh, we will face, eternal judgment. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But Ephesians chapter 5, if we read there, 1 through 5. And it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us, and have given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be named once among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of his God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. <coughs> Excuse me. So, obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ has everything to do with the judgment seat where God will judge uh, the judgment seat of Christ where God would judge those who did good and reward them for what they've done. That's, obedience is, is, is the answer. God wants your obedience more than your sacrifice. Amen. And then also, <clears throat> what determines God's eternal destiny? That's what we're talking about. Obedience, okay, accepting Christ, Obedience, uh, obedience, and faithfulness. Let's go to Luke 12. Luke 12, 47 through 48. <clears throat> All these things that we're talking about now have to do with uh, determining your destiny, eternal life in Christ which is obedience, where we talked about obedience, accepting Christ, walking in obedience. And here, Luke 12, verse 47 and 48, it reads, <coughs> excuse me, it says here, and that servant which knew his Lord's will 
and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beat with many stripes. So Jesus is talking about, um, uh, she uses a similitude of a, of a servant who does not obey the Lord and then a servant who does obey the Lord. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For until whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Okay. <clears throat> Let me go up to 42 and read this. Let's read some more of this and go back up to 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to, to beat the men, the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at that hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will pour him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did not commit these wrongs of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whosoever much is given of him so much be required. And to him men uh, have committed much of him they will ask the more. So we talk about stewardship of your life. Amen. Um, a couple of more. Uh, <clears throat> How do we determine man's eternal destiny? Uh, so we, we read acceptance of Christ or rejection of Christ is one. Obedience to the gospel is two. Uh, and then uh, the care and concern for others, your neighbors. Because God doesn't want you just live to yourself. He wants you to be concerned and be a blessing to your neighbors, whoever that might be. Matthew, uh, the judgment has a lot to do with that. How love your neighbor. The Bible says the, it's the royal law. <laughs> so it's very important to God that we love our neighbors, those who are sick, those who are poor, those who are needy. Um, yeah, that's an excellent ministry. Uh, but in Matthew 25, in verses 34 through 36, and it reads as follows. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was a hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Amen. Okay, and continue on. It says, uh, naked and you clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came unto me then shall the righteous answer him saying Lord when saw we thee a, hun a hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them, 
on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when shall we the a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So God wants us uh, to, uh, he's pointing out some things here. How does God determine man's eternal destiny? If you want to uh, understand this and do these things, because it has to do with your destiny, because it's a, it's a way of God judging us, uh, <clears throat> and it is doing the will of God. And again, I'll go over it. A decision to accept or reject Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Uh, to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then to care and be concerned for sick and poor people. And then we have one more here. To do his work. To do God's work. First Corinthians chapter 3. Let's see what is God's work. What is the will of God as it relates to it. So this, is, this has everything to do with occupying until he comes too. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 3.13, ooh, I, I think uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3.13. It says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by a fire. So to do good works, every man it shall manifest, it, whatever you've done here, it shall manifest for the day shall declare it. It will be revealed by fire, it says here. And the fire shall try every man's work or whatever it is. If a man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but himself shall be saved, yet so. So here we have the judgment seat the, the eternal judgment process here, which includes the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment for those who will be punished and uh, receive the consequences of their behavior in life. Well, this concludes our time together. Uh, appreciate your patience today and appreciate you being with us today. May God richly bless you and uh, I'll say this and speak this into your lives. Uh, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Thank you and have a blessed day.